In the previous video, we introduced the main IDs with self-attention as this strategy to compute refined embeddings by means of weighted averages. In this video, we will present the complete equations for the self-attention layers used in transformers, including two minor pieces that were missing in the previous video. To present equations that can handle sentences of any length, long or short, we use n to denote the number of words in the sentence. We also use d to denote the length of the word embeddings. The first thing we need to do is to compute query, key and value vectors for all the input words, where the value vectors are one of the two things omitted in the previous video. Here, wq, wk and wv contain three parameters that we can train. As in the previous video, the queries and keys are used to compute the weights. However, self-attention does not actually compute averages of input word embeddings, but of the corresponding value vectors vi. The conceptual understanding presented in the previous video is still valid, but by introducing yet another matrix, wv, we make the network even more flexible. To compute the weights, we first compute the z values for every pair of key and query vector. The second piece that was missing in the previous video is that the inner products between the keys and queries are normalized by the square root of the dimension of the input vectors. This is really just a technical detail, but they argue that it leads to better learning. One heuristic argument for including the scaling is that the z values vary less with dimension. For instance, if you look at the two norm of a vector of ones of length d, normalized with the square root of d, you can see that it takes the value one regardless of the length of the vector. Once we have computed the z values, we will go through all the words and do the following. We pass Z1i to Zni through a softmax to compute the weights. Here, the index i corresponds to the index of the query vector, which is also the index of the word for which the obtained weights are used to compute a new word embedding. Finally, we compute the new word embedding for word i by taking a weighted average. Note that the vectors that we are averaging are the value vectors and not the input vectors. As mentioned previously, this is one of the two differences compared to our description in the previous video. Given the complete equations, we can make an interesting observation, namely that the order of the input words does not influence the output vectors. We can therefore think of the input and output from self-attention as two sets and self-attention as a function that maps from one set to the other. This is actually one reason that self-attention is so useful in many contexts, also beyond natural language processing. Let us look at an example with only three words to study the influence of word order. Suppose that the input sentence is, he is old. I'd now like you to consider what would happen to the word embedding if the input had a different order, such as, old is he or old he is. We would normally compute the query key and value vectors for all input words and give them indices 1, 2 and 3. However, for the purpose of illustrating the invariance to order, we can instead use the input words as indexes. To compute the query key and value vectors for one of the input vectors, we simply take its word embedding, say x he, and multiply it with the matrices WQ, WK, and WV, respectively. This gives the same query key and value vectors as usual, but with the minor difference that we now refer to them as Q, he, K, he, and V, he. To keep the presentation brief, let us look at how we can compute the new embedding for the word he. Using the same indexation, we can proceed to compute the three required z values. In all three cases, the query vector is for the word he, whereas the key vectors differ. In z he he, both the key and query vectors are for the word he. In z is he, 
we multiply the key vector for s with the query vector for he and finally in z old he we multiply the key vector for old with the query vector for he these z values are then passed through a softmax to obtain the corresponding weights finally we compute a new word embedding for the word he by taking a weighted average using the above weights and the value vectors for the different words I hope that you can see that these equations are analogous to the equations presented previously with the minor difference that we now use words as indices. The point I'm trying to make is that these equations hold regardless of how the words are ordered. That is, the vector y he is the new word embedding for the word he, regardless if we plug in the sentence he is old, or if we shuffle the words around and plug in, for instance, old he is. Since the word order doesn't matter, we can view it as a mapping from one set of vectors to another set of vectors with the same number of vectors. By the way, transformers don't actually ignore the word order completely and we'll return to this in a later video. Now, we have already described the complete equations for self-attention. However, it's useful to also know how to write these using matrix notation. These equations might be slightly less intuitive, but they are far more compact and definitely preferable when you want to implement these algorithms. The first thing we need to do is to introduce matrix notations. We use capital X to denote the matrix X1 to Xn, that is, the first column of capital X is X1. The second column is x2, and so on. Similarly, y denote the matrix y1 to yn, whereas q, k, and v contain the query, key, and value vectors for all the words in our sequence. Given this notation, we can introduce all the query vectors using a simple matrix product, wq times x. To understand why this is true, we note that wq times x is wq times the matrix x1 to xn. Now, the first vector of this product is simply wq times x1. The second vector is wq times x2, and so on. Given that q is q1 to qn, this means that we arrive at the relations q1 is equal to wq times x1, q2 is equal to wq times x2, and so on, which is precisely the expression that we had in the vector case. This means that we have simply obtained a more compact expression for the same thing. I will skip the arguments for keys and values, since they are analogous. We can also express the matrix Z as a simple matrix product, k transpose q divided by the square root of d. It is simple to multiply these matrices together and verify that element ji in z is kj transpose qi divided by the square root of d, which confirms that our new expression for z is equivalent to the one presented previously. Given capital Z, we then obtain the weights by applying a softmax to each column in Z. The weights for word I are then collected in column number I in the matrix W. Using a derivation analogous to the one presented for WQ times X, we can show that the relation Y equals V times W implies that YI is equal to capital V times the vector w1i, w2i, and so on, where yi is the ith column in capital Y, and this is the ith vector in capital W. Since capital V is the matrix v1, v2, and so on, we can also write this as a summation over j from 1 to n of vj times wji, where vj are the columns of capital V, which is precisely the expression that we had previously. To conclude, we have presented the complete equations for self-attention and showed how they can be expressed in a very compact form. 